questions during this program, please note it down somewhere as after these three speakers, we will address your questions in a Q&A featuring our speakers and the district trio. So whether you're new and Toastmasters, or if you're an experienced member looking for a refresher, I hope you can find this afternoon session informative and valuable. But before anything else, let us begin with an invocation. So let us put ourselves in the presence of the Almighty as we have our invocation. request everyone to please unmute yourselves as we recite the Toastmaster's promise. The Toastmaster's promise. As a member of Toastmasters International in my club, I promise to attend club meetings regularly, to prepare all of my speech and leadership projects to the best of my ability, basing them on Toastmasters education program, to prepare for and fulfill meeting assignments, to provide fellow members with helpful constructive evaluations, to help the club maintain a positive friendly environment necessary for all members to learn and grow, to serve my club as an officer when called upon to do so, to treat my fellow club members who are guests with respect and courtesy, to bring guests to club meetings so they can see the benefits that the Toastmasters membership offers, to, bring to adhere to the guidelines and rules for all Toastmasters educational and recognition programs, and rules for all Toastmasters educational and recognition programs, respect, service, and excellence during the conduct of all Toastmasters activities. Service and excellence during the conduct of all Toastmasters activities. All right, thank you. So what better way to kick off this afternoon session than to hear it from our big boss, our country, our District 75 District Director. He is among the first to complete his path in, our home, in my home club, but he's happiest when you call him Mr. Cute. So please help me welcome <laughs> Distinguished Toastmaster, District Director Richard Coajo. <laughs> Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the members of the training team for organizing this event and to all our speakers. This afternoon, I hope you guys will be champion as we learn to navigate better pathways. So, welcome and enjoy and learn the rest of the training program. By the way, Kenley is a single heartthrob of. District 75, so just letting you know. Up to you, can we? That last part was unnecessary. <laughs> but thank you very much for your introductory words, distinguished Toastmaster Richard Coho. Now, fellow Toastmasters, Pathways is a broad program, and there are many paths and projects within it that we hope 
you can discover this afternoon. So why did we first start with the basic and have our first speaker take us through the overview of Pathways and some updates on the program. Our first speaker is the current president of Cagayan de Oro Toastmasters Club. She has completed not only one, but two paths, her leadership development and presentation mastery paths. And one thing that she enjoys most about the Pathways program is the flexibility that it provides, which I'm sure she'll explain to you in a bit. So her favorite slogan is keep it simple. Everyone, please help me welcome Toastmaster Marites Abu Habil. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Kenley Go. Last 2015, I became a member of Toastmasters International. I was so excited to deliver my icebreaker speech. But don't you know, that was my first and last speech. After two years of hibernation, I decided to go back to Toastmasters. The vice president of education told me that there is a new educational program called Pathways and have to deliver my icebreaker speech again. Things have changed. I gain weight. I need to change my clothes. Same thing in Toastmasters. Toastmasters, Toastmasters International finally decided to redesign the legacy program that is in time with the need of the current situation, and that is Pathways. Our objectives this afternoon are identify the core competencies and benefits of Pathways, assess the chosen path based on the core competencies, 1924 was the year our founder, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley, recognized the need to help individuals develop their communication skills. That was a milestone. 2018 is also a milestone because this was the year that Pathways was launched. When I heard about Pathways, what came to mind was Am I given the chance to follow a road? Is it bumpy, muddy, smooth? Worry no more, fellow Toastmasters, because Pathways is tailor-made for you, for me, and for everyone to help us build our core competencies to make us good leaders and great speakers. There are actually 11 Pats. Now, I want you to unmute yourselves, everybody, if you wish to answer what pin or button that will show on your screen, and that will be your bragging rights. What is that, anyone? What is that path? Anyone from the room? Starts with letter S. Strategic relation. Relation. I like that. Congratulations. Strategic relationships. Correct. What about this button? Anyone from the group? Team no one? Club. It's team. Yes. Wow. Brilliant. Toastmasters. Team collaboration. The third button. What do you think is that? Starts with letter V. Dictionary mm -hmm. communication. Correct. Congratulations. Dictionary. And what about this? Looks familiar to me, though. Letter L. Leadership. L Leadership. Correct. Congratulations. And this? Starts with letter M. Motivational strategies. Perfect. And this button here starts with letter P. Persuasion mastery. It's persuasive, persuasive. influence. Correct. English. What about that button? It's 
Presentation and mastery. Correct. Congratulations. I don't see your faces, but I know everybody will recognize you. What about that one, fellow Toastmasters? D. Dynamic, dynamic leadership. Dynamic leadership. Dynamic leadership. Great job! Dynamic. And this button over here starts with letter E. Effective coaching. Effective coaching. Wonderful. Looks familiar to me, though. Engaging humor. Engaging humor. Exactly. Last but not the least. Innovative planning. Innovative planning. Innovative planning. Innovative planning. Congratulations, fellow Toastmasters. And I know for sure each and every one of you has actually launched their paths, or perhaps you have not, and it's time for you to launch this afternoon. There are actually five core competencies and pathways. And the first competency is public speaking. Our goal here in Pathways is, of course, to improve our communication skills. Finishing level one alone, we learn the fundamentals of public speaking. We learn to organize our speeches and we conduct interviews as well. What about the second core competency? Interpersonal communication. This is where we define our goals, give constructive feedback, and build relationships. Interpersonal communication is very important in leadership skills. Third is strategic relationship. This is where we define and map our mission and vision. And we learn to collaborate with other people. We define our projects and plan. And we become persuasive speakers. Number four, it's not just about time management. It's also managing your people as well. In this way, we can adopt a particular leadership style that is fit for a situation and maintain a collaborative environment. Number five, obviously it builds confidence. All of the 11 paths actually has both the first and the sec the first and the fifth competencies, which is of course, public speaking and confidence. Two of them are present in all of the 11 paths. In the interest of time, I cannot give you all of the core competencies of the 11 paths, but I will give you three familiar paths that are quite interesting, in interesting to me. I will be sending the file to you after I finish my talk. Leadership development. There are actually four competencies in leadership development, public speaking, interpersonal communication, strategic leadership, and confidence. In leadership development, you learn to create or plan and execute a particular event and apply what you have learned in all of the electives. It really helps. Personally, it does for me. Before, I don't accept leadership responsibility. When I went back in 2018, I just wanted to deliver my speeches. When I took this path through the assessment that was recommended to me, I almost gave up, but then I just pushed through. Look at me right now, I'm taking up leadership role because I understand what it feels like to be a leader. And it's not about me, it's about giving service to others. I actually got that something in pathways, a realization and meaning that finishing the path will actually help you become a better version of yourself. Presentation mastery. There are two core competencies in presentation mastery, public speaking and confidence. This is where you extend several speeches and learn to apply what you have learned with the electives. Not only that, but you will learn to focus on how you connect with your audience and of 
course, your existing audience who are your Toastman Toastmasters member in your club. How to improve your connection to your fellow members and guests. Engaging humor. There are two core competencies in this path. Same with presentation mastery. In engaging humor, it's actually interesting because if you don't have that sense of humor, you will take out something out of you, something that is funny in you because in level two, you learn to know your humor. Honestly, I took this path because I wanted to improve my sense of humor. It's really interesting. And I have really enjoyed delivering speeches in engaging humor. Why? Because you will learn how to deliver humorous stories to your audience and use humor to deliver a message. Fellow Toastmasters, there are actually 11 levels in Pathways, and for some of you here are quite familiar with it. But each level has its own objective. The first level is more on the fundamentals. You learn how to write your speech, how to organize your speech by using the basic structure. You will learn how to deliver your speech using your hand gestures, body language, and vocal variety. In level two, as you master the fundamentals, you will be learning your style depending on, wa on what path you're taking in. Example, your leadership style. In engaging humor, you will learn how to know your humor as well. After you learn your style, level three is you increase knowledge. You learn to take electives and you have the chance to choose among the electives. And this will be discussed by the next speaker. Level four is building your skills. Same thing, you will have two electives on a particular path of your choice. Level five, as you finish level one to two, it's obviously visible in your speech delivery that you are actually demonstrating expertise. You learn the basics, so now you learn more on how to master your speech delivery. Not only in your speech delivery, perhaps on your leadership roles in your Toastmasters club. But that's not the end yet because you have to deliver two speeches for your path completion. This is where you tell everyone with your journey in this path how it changed you and how it affects you and your experience while delivering and finishing on the projects. By the way, there's a difference between a speech and a project. Some would think that Okay, I delivered my speech project, but actually behind the speech, there are projects that you need to accomplish before you deliver the speech. And finishing the project is very important. Let's not do a shortcut because one of our core value in Toastmaster is integrity. What's in it for you, fellow Toastmasters? What about the benefits? The benefits are tremendous, enormous. Career advancement. If you wanted to be promoted in your company and you wanted to elevate, this is high time for you to enroll a path because you will improve your communication skills and leadership skills. And you become mature supervisors, managers. As young professionals, we need to improve our communication skills. Not only that, but also our soft skills. What are these soft skills? Critical thinking skills. As we write our speeches, we learn to analyze what should I deliver and what are the situations? As we deliver feedback to our fellow Toastmasters, we know what it feels like to talk to this person using our critical thinking skills. Not only that, fellow Toastmasters, we also learn how to be coachable because we have mentors or coaches in our clubs. We develop the feeling of empathy. We learn to accept challenges because we develop that problem-solving skills. 
Toastmasters Pathways provides us to improve our writing skills. As we finished from one level to another, we write our speeches and fulfill certain projects. What about you? What have you experienced in Toastmasters? You can send in the chat box and write it from there, but I know for sure I could hardly see it right now, but as I check, you can just type as I go through the session. After this fellow Toastmasters, we, ha we have club members or club fellow club members who belong to corporate clubs. And for some, they said, well, I need just to join the club because it's really a requirement for my company. But don't you know there are benefits in a corporate club? It augments the skills of the employees. It helps the employer on how to develop the skills of their employees. Employee retention is higher because the employee would feel that they are valued because they are important and the competencies is com are commendable. Imagine 300 competencies. I cannot mention them all to you. You will receive that later in the chat box. Club meetings is easier actually. Club meetings in corporations, specifically in a Toastmasters club, because it's actually the employees who conduct the meetings, not just for the employer, but definitely if they have problems in their companies and they need to resolve it, it's easier for the employees on how to go about it. And inexpensive ongoing development. Why? Because we meet every week. For some, they meet twice a week. How about that for an ongoing development? We need to practice every meeting, don't you think? So for employers, it's, it's really handy for them to have this Toastmasters Club because it's actually learning by doing for the employees. And for the employer, they get quality employees. What members are saying? Personally, for me, it's skill sharpening. When I went back in 2018, my communication skill was a bit shaky. Why? Because I, I forgot all the fundamentals. And now when I went, ba went back, I learned to speak in front of the audience, though it's just virtual. I become a better person and I like it because it's a better version of me. What about, what about you, fellow Toastmasters? What's in it for you and what are the benefits that you have experienced in Pathways? Is it more of being interactive or is it collaborative? Just type in the chat box, let me check. Oh, it's okay. Fellow Toastmasters, manifest your destiny. Why? Because it's in your hands. You have a choice, a choice to launch that path that you want to enroll and the choice to improve yourself and take the opportunity of being the best version of yourself. Hit that click or click that button over there. If you're in your screen right now, go to toastmasters.org open your email, your account, and then enroll in a path that you want to while, while it's still early for you to accomplish. Why? Because as I can see, there are actually existing Toastmasters who have not even launched their path. They just part of the club, but they didn't enroll. I know a few people, and that's why I'm encourage, encouraging them to please Please take this opportunity now. You're paying Toastmasters International and Toastmasters International provided you with the opportunity of the several choices and pathways for you to improve your communication and leadership skills and to have a better advancement on your career. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. All right, thank you very much, Toastmaster Ching, for that informative 
talk on the pathways overview. As Toastmaster Ting shared, there are multiple paths and projects that can be done in pathways. So now the question is, where will your path take you? So now that we've learned what, what pathways is and some of the options or paths that you can choose, I'm sure that you've been itching to give it a shot. So to help us navigate through the online platform is someone who's been in Toastmasters since 2009. She is a past Division K governor, a founder of two flourishing clubs in Cavite, Maxim Toastmasters Club and Dasmarina City Toastmasters Club. And she's currently serving as a district trainer. She's a property management professional, a mother of two, and I'm sure she doesn't look like it at all, but a grandmother of three adorable grandchildren as well. What's the coolest feature and pathways for her? It's the My Feedback and Badges. If you're curious to discover what it is, please hear it from our next speaker, distinguished Toastmaster Maria Luisa Haben. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? Hope you're all okay and not yet sleepy. Okay, now that you have learned about the overview of pathways, now is the time for us to navigate the base camp. Let's go. I hope all your laptops are ready and your you are all logged in and Toastmasters website. Let's go. I will now share my screen. Please follow me. Okay, as you can see, I'm already logged in in the Toastmasters website. What I will be discussing with you this afternoon is how to access your Basecamp profile, my account, Basecamp homepage, the other features of Basecamp, including my feedback, badges, and my documents, and how to apply for external training, how will you view and print your certificate and some other reminders at the end. So let's start. How can we get to Basecamp? There are two ways actually. Can you see this Pathways tab? You can press this one and then press Go to Basecamp. If you do this, you will be directed to your paths and learning where you can see all your projects. Let's go back arrow left. The most suggested way to do to go to Basecamp is through this link. If you can see welcome and then your name, press that link. And then you will see these three boxes on top. Now the left box will make you go to Basecamp. Like press this go, but if you have more than one club, make sure you choose the right club before pressing go. So let me press go. And then voila, I'm now in my Basecamp homepage. Let me go back, arrow left, so that I can show you the other boxes. Boxes in the middle will make you choose a new path. This is very good for new members. This is where they will take the assessment. And if you are an old member of those masters, if you want to buy a new pack, you can use this box. On the right, you will see the navigator. What's inside the navigator? You can learn anything about those masters and the pathways education program. Now, below those boxes, it's actually your those masters profile. As you can see on the left side, I have my picture here and my basic information such as my member number, address, email, home phone, and mobile. And on the right side is my education history, my education awards, offices held, and many other information about me. You can actually edit it. Just press edit contact information, edit whatever you want to edit here, and then save. Now let's go to Basecamp by pressing go. I hope you can follow me. <laughs> this is now your Basecamp homepage and we will be discussing all the tabs in here. But before that, I would like you all to update your Basecamp profile. Do you know that you have 
a Basecamp profile inside the homepage? Well, we will know about it. It's actually very important to update because this contains your basic information, just like Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. You also have a Basecamp profile here. So where is it? You can see a square outline on the right side, upper right side, where I have my pictures. Others do not have picture here because they have not updated their profile. So I'll click this one. So if I click this one, I am now in my Basecamp profile. Again, it has my basic information, my email, and then it has my summary. So as, as I said, your club members can actually see your Basecamp profile. So this is a very good way to introduce yourself so that they will know who you are, what do you do. For example, I would like to say that I'm a teacher, I'm an environmentalist, I'm in Toastmasters for five years. I held the position of uh, Toastmaster of the day just um, just uh, our last meeting. So as you can see in my summary, I have inputted something. If I want to edit it, I'll press the pencil icon. I can type something and then save. Now below the summary are, is the interest tab. You can input any interest that you have by clicking again the pencil icon. For example, I will input, uh, although I don't do this, dancing, okay? Press dancing, make sure you put a comma after the word. So I'll press comma, and then you will see there's a box that appears. It means that you have done the step correctly. Now, what is good in this feature is if you press in one of your interests, it will show who among your club members have the same interest. For example, I'll press leadership skill. Let me say first, <laughs> okay, leadership skills. And then voila, I will see all my club members who have the same interest. So it's a great way of connecting with them. Maybe collaborative project will work among you. Okay, let's go back. Always arrow left. Now below, you can see additional information. Since when you are a member, what's your credential or, what, or what's your norm? And whether you are a Pathways mentor. On the right side, you will see different meeting roles that you have performed. But you will also notice that there's no way to edit it here. So how can we edit this additional information? You have to go to my account, either in this link or upper right corner the cog wheel so press the cog wheel and go to my account drop down okay so in my account drop down you will see preferences there are various settings here such as the time zone of course we chose the one for philippines or near philippines such as singapore you can select font for your signature. You can select formal or chic. But me, I selected the, this like monotype Corsiva one. <laughs> and then below that, here is where you can edit the dates where you perform such role. The system only requires one date only. But make sure you update three important roles. That is Toastmaster of the Day, Table Topics Master, and Speech Evaluation or evaluator because leadership awards usually consider these three important roles. And after you change the date, you can just change the date here and then save. Now, let's go back to Basecamp homepage. How do we do that? Either you press the left arrow or hover into home and click the drop down. Always do that. Many Toastmasters are having hard time here because they're pressing here on top. You have to press the drop down. Okay, I'll press home. Then I'm now back in the Basecamp homepage. Let's go through it one by one. The one on the left, it's a tab for paths and learning or the educational transcript. Let's click it. Again, this will be directed to your curriculum or the projects that you are working on. Let's go back. 
The second tab is the speech evaluation tab. When we click it, you will see all the evaluation resource of all projects. It's very important when you are evaluating somebody and the evaluation sheet is not available. You can get it here. All projects evaluation sheet are here. Now, the last tab on the left is the tutorial and resources. This is where you will see various information such as a project description, how to navigate a base camp, um, evaluation resource, and many other things. It's all available here. Now below that is the paths and learning where you can see the overview or the summary of the projects that you are working on. Below that is the suggested learning, which is not yet activated. Now on the right side, you will see a video, a video on uh, visiting Basecamp homepage. We're hoping that PI will update this video for any updates. Try to visit this video. Now below that, are the three important and engaging feature of Basecamp, namely my feedback, my badges, and my documents. They are very useful but seldom used. Okay, we will know that this afternoon. Let's go there one by one. Let's go to my feedback tab. This feature will allow you to request or receive feedback from your other club members. As you know, feedback or evaluation is a hallmark of Toastmasters. And this is the one that sets us apart from any other organization, our ability to give and receive feedback. And sometimes the two to three minute evaluation seems like not enough for us and we want more. So this is the feature that you can use. So press this one. You will be brought to this page. So how can I do that? So if I want to request for a feedback, I can just type. And I request for feedback for my role as, for example, TMOD last Sunday. And then who would you like to get that feedback from? This is now you will search for your other club member. For example, I will choose for our Past President Veronica Billia Dulid, I will type her name. I will choose her name and it will appear here. There's a question here. Who would you like to see the request responses? Managers or everyone? When you say managers, those are the base camp managers. I will choose everyone and then I will post. So when Toastmaster Veronica opens her base camp feedback feature, she will see that I have requested a feedback from her. Now, how can we give feedback to other club members? You have to search for their name in this search box. So I will type, for example, one of our members, Ramnel Aldai. I will type the name. If I want to go to his Basecamp profile, I'll click his name. I will actually see his Basecamp profile here. And then I'll go to his feedback tab. Now, this is the feature where you can award badges to your club members as a sign of recognition. So I would like to tell TM Ramnell that um, kudos to you, TM Ram, for performing well as our surgeon at arms okay and then again there's a question who would you like to see the feedback will it be the person itself only the person itself and the managers that means the base camp managers or everyone i will choose everyone okay after i choose who i would like uh, to see this feedback you can see on the right side, there's an attach button. You can attach a certificate, you can attach uh, some greetings. And on the right side, you will see a medal icon. This is actually the badge icon. You can actually give encouraging badges to your club members. So I'll press the icon badge. There are six badges available for you 
to award your club members. There's adaptable, collaborative, courageous, exceptional, innovative, and inspirational. So for those master RAM, I will give an exceptional badge. I will choose and then post. So when those master RAM opens his base camp, he will see that he has received a badge from me. So I encourage everyone to use this feature so that you can create a motivating and uh, appreciating um, environment to your club, especially nowadays. We need, we need recognition. Okay, let me now go back again, hover home, press home. I'll go back to my base camp page. Let's now talk about next feature that is my badges. If I will press my badges, this is where you can see all the badges that you receive. Okay, actually, the system gives you a badge every time you complete a path and every time you complete a level. And of course, you can also see here the badges that you have received from your club members. As you can see here, I have total of 45 badges. So have you received already or have you given badges? So please, for the club officer, try to make this an activity. Maybe every after the meeting, you can encourage them, please send badges to our role takers. And then maybe at the end of the year, who has the num highest number of badges, maybe you can give a real badge at the end of the year or during Christmas party. Okay, let me go back to the homepage. And the last one is my documents. What's in here? If I press this one, this is where you can save various documents such as your speech, your evaluation sheets, your PowerPoint presentations. There are folders, predefined folders per level. So if I want to save a speech in my level one, I can press this key to can I have saved some documents here. You just have to add file, choose from your computer, and add. This is very good as a reference, just in case you want to see what you have done on that particular level and on that particular file. Okay, we have discussed all that is inside the Basecamp homepage. Now, we still receive questions. Can I deliver my speech outside my club? Can the seminar that I facilitated be credited in pathways? The answer is, yes, you can. But you have to go through a step in Basecamp. What is it? Okay, you have to apply for external training. How to do that? Go to Paths and Learning. Okay. So this is your Paths and Learning page. You will see on the right side, there's three tiny weeny dots here or the ellipsis. Press this one. There will be a drop down. You can see Add External Training. So press this one. Actually, the procedure is here, but it's so simple. Just complete all the necessary information in here, such as language. Is it in English? Obviously, English. Brief assignment description for your transcript, for example, time management. Describe your plan. I will be facilitating this uh, training in our company. Specify who will you present this to the supervisors and managers. These are just examples. And then indicate the start and completion date. For example, tomorrow, I'll choose tomorrow. And then what path? There's a drop down here. You just choose what path you're working on. And then project, what project you're working on. For example, communicate change. Planned location. There are three options. There are two options. Will you deliver it? in a Toastmaster club also, but not in your club or outside of Toastmasters um, in your company or in the community. You just have to choose it. For example, choose outside of Toastmasters. And then I can select a file to 
as a form of evidence, like maybe an invitation or an agenda or a copy of your presentation, and then submit. What happens after you submit? After you submit, your BP Education will receive an email that you have submitted a request for external training, which he or she has to approve. Once it's approved, you can go on and deliver that training outside. Okay, now let's go back to your paths and learning. Another thing that I want to share with you is to how to view and print certificates. Certificates are always exciting, right? Now, I am in my paths and learning page. I'm working on this project. For example, I open my innovative planning. I know I'm done with my level one. Okay. So if you're done in a level, you will receive a certificate and every time you are done in a path. So as you can see, there is here this tab view certificate. If you just press this one, certificate will appear. You can save it in your computer or show somebody your boss. The BP Education can actually access this. So I advise the BP Education to get a copy of the certificate and post it in your GC or your Facebook page as a form of recognition and appreciating the member for completing that. It's a milestone that we have to, we can be proud of it. Okay, now I'm going back to the Basecamp homepage. So far, we have touched all of the tabs in the Basecamp homepage. Just a reminder, especially for BP for Education, make sure that you approve the project immediately so that it can be credited to your DCP award or Distinguished Club Program Award. Don't forget, there are two steps to do. First, you approve in the Basecamp. The second is approve in Club Central. Because if you will not approve in Club Central, it will not be reflected in the Distinguished Club Program Award. I hope you have learned even in this very short session. Remember, Pathways is very effective and a flexible education program that is designed to guide us and become effective leaders and communicators with just basic learning on its projects, pathways, and even navigation. You will enjoy the learning experience. Thank you for listening. Back to you, Toastmaster Kendi. Thank you, Distinguished Toastmaster Luisa, for navigate, helping us navigate through Basecamp. I've been using Pathways for a while now, but I never realized that there were so many other features in Basecamp, including setting up your profile, having all access to all evaluation sheets and projects and the badges. So time to select your profile picture. <laughs> Distinguished Toastmaster Luisa has 46 badges. I checked mine just a while ago and I have six. So I guess I have so much more to catch up and discover. So now we will take a mini break, a relaxation and stretching to be led by a Toastmaster and past area director from Mactan Toastmasters Club. He says that this relaxation portion will stretch not only the body, but also the mind. Huh. And his favorite quote is, the greatest thing you'll ever learn is to love and to be loved in return. Let's now show some love to Toastmaster Ranji Abelia. Thank you, Toastmaster Ken Lee. Can you hear me okay? All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I am the one tasked today to do the icebreaker. So that means I'm gonna literally break the ice with you. You know, this is a time that we usually take a nap but we need to move our bodies first. So our first activity is we're going to dance. That is why I will ask everybody to open your camera and we're going to dance together. 
How about, can I ask everybody to stand? Let's stand, everybody. And Zoom Master will share a video in which we're going to dance together. Let's stand, everybody, and let's dance together by following the steps in the video. There, I can see now. Go, Zoom Master John. Let's dance. Gummy, funny, lucky gummy bear. I'm a jelly bear. I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a gummy bear. Yes, I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a yummy, tummy, funny, lucky gummy bear. I'm a jelly bear, cause I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a moving, moving, jamming, singing gummy bear. Oh, yeah. Gummy, 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 gummy bear. Gummy, 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 gummy bear. Fighting by Dolly Party, pointing by Dolly Party, pointing by Dolly Party, party pop. Pointing by Dolly Party, pointing by Dolly Party, pointing by Dolly Party, party pop. Oh, I'm a gummy bear, yes, I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a yummy, tummy, funny, lucky gummy bear. I'm a jelly bear, cause I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a moving, grooving, jamming, singing gummy bear. Gummy, 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 gummy bear. And then you want gooey moxie, get a get a bella. Get a bella, get a bella, get a bella, get a bella, get a bella. And then you want gooey, gloomy, easy, make a bella, mumbo, chura. My baby, get a mighty, get a tall party. Oh, I'm a gummy bear. Yes, I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a yummy, tummy, funny, lucky gummy bear. I'm a jelly bear. Cause I'm a gummy bear. Oh, I'm a moving. All right. Wow, that was fun dancing with everybody. I love that music because you know it's it's fun and we can just follow the simple steps all together. Now this time it is time for us to stretch our minds. So I have a little game for everybody. And this is a picture connection game. And to those who will be able to answer will win GCash. 1 million pesos GCash. So let's see. Two is to type your answer in the chat box. And the first one who will give the correct answer, then you will get a GCash prize. All right. So everybody's ready? So this is a game of who can type the fastest. And remember, there is a prize. So let's have a sample first. Hmm. So the first one is like this. All right. There. This is just a sample. What do you think is this one? So based on the picture, what is this? Green tea. That was fast. Yeah. Green that's tea. Correct. That's correct. Exactly. <laughs> green tea. tea. Green tea. Very easy. Japanese tea, just... matcha tea. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, specifically. Now, you don't need to say the answer. Just type it 
and the first one who can answer it will give a GCash prize. Okay, let's start. This one. What do you think is this? Hmm. Education related place. So based from the pictures, what do you think is the word I'm looking for? Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see if somebody got the answer. Well, the answer is university. <laughs> All right, it's university. So if you have noticed there, the universe and a city. Let's see who got the correct answer. And the first one is JR, JR Hilario. You, you won GCash, 100 pesos, courtesy of District 75. Let's go to the next one. Hmm. How about that? Okay, type your answer. A famous person. And based on the pictures, who do you think is we are looking for? Five, four, three, two, one. And the first one who got the correct answer is Bill Gates. Yeah, the first one who got the correct answer, that is Pamela. Pamela Chain Elliot, congratulations. How about this? There. What do you think is this picture? Type your answer. Let's see who got the fastest fingers. Wow. Fast hands. Let's see. Okay. Close answers. Let's see, I'm looking at right now who got the correct answer. I think nobody got the correct answer yet. Remember, it's a game, that's the clue. What is the game? Okay, let's see. Hmm, I can't see the correct answer yet. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. So let's see if somebody got the correct answer. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna reveal the answer now. The answer is, anybody who got an idea, what is this? I can see here cross legs, cross words. All right, the answer is, it's tennis. <laughs> okay, it's tennis because X is 10 and then the knees. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I think nobody got the correct answer. All right, let's go to the next one. How about that? It is a festival. Based from the pictures, what do you think is the word? Type your answer. Okay, all right. I think a lot of you got the correct answer for GCash. Okay, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is Independence Day. That is correct. So the first one who got the correct answer is Cassie. Cassie Gonzaga. So you won GCash for that. Hmm, let's go to the next one. Fast fingers. Now this time, you need to give me the correct sequence of the pictures. So just type the, the numbers. The numbers for each, each picture. And let's see if you got the correct sequence. Look at the picture intently. All right. Again, there are five pictures, or so there should be five numbers. All right, wow. Let's see who got the correct answer. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. 
And the answer is there. It's two, five, three, one, four. So let's see who got it first. Okay, I got here a lot of answers. Again, two, five, three, one, four. And I can see the right answer here. That is Toastmaster Roel. You win a uh, GCash. Two, three. Oh, two, five, three, one, four. How about this? What do you think is the correct sequence? Based from the pictures. All right. Let's see who got the correct answer. All right, let's reveal the answer. And the answer is there. It is four, a baby, three, a child, and then five, it's like an adult, and then two, more than an adult, and of course, the skeleton. Let's see, you got the correct answer. Well, I got, I got a lot of answers here. And that would be... It is Tiffany. Am I correct? It's Tiffany Du who got the correct answer. And that's it. So I hope everybody had fun. And let's continue learning with this them a webinar. That's my time. Good afternoon, everybody. Congratulations to all the GCash winners. And thank you, Toastmaster Ranji, for stretching both our minds and our bodies. A while, a while ago, I saw in the chat box that Director Julius asked if there will be a persuasive dancing path. Probably not, but I'm sure there's already a humorous dancing path present. So now he'll be moving on to our final speaker who will be sharing about the different projects and electives that you can encounter as you go along your selected path. Now our third speaker hails from Pine City Toastmasters Club. It's currently part of the district training team for the second year now. And outside Toastmasters, she keeps busy as a seasoned trader in capital markets, using her experience in Toastmasters to teach about financial literacy and mentor younger advisors. She's also a leader in a Rotary Club, a student at Harvard, and a mother to four beautiful children. And her favorite path is persuasive influence. If you're curious to know why or what are the, some of the electives in this path, then please hear it from our next speaker, Toastmaster Katrina Victoria Gumaya. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Before we start our discussion for our projects and electives, can you all type your levels in our chat box? What levels are you in your pathways right now? So can we see those levels, please? Level two, three, four. All right, thank you. Oh, we have level five. We have a lot of advanced speakers already. I would see, oh, all right. We have a lot of path completers already. Two, three, one, all right. So this afternoon, we will be discussing levels one to five in a more in-depth manner so that our beginners would also understand and our advanced speakers would also appreciate the levels of pathways. So let's start. So for the five levels, from levels one to five, here's what you can expect for the laddering of the programs and the speech projects. For level one, this will be about mastering your fundamentals. In our pathways projects for all the paths, you will be having your icebreakers. So regardless of your path, all level one would have to start with an icebreaker. That's the speech that would let you introduce yourself to the club. 
Now, what if you have already finished one, two, or three paths? Now, the icebreaker could be delivered at your own discretion. For example, your first icebreaker could be something about yourself, something that's CV related, where you've studied, what what's your what's your job. You know, it could be the basics that you want your club members to know about you. Now, as you progress to other paths, you can now proceed to a deeper level of icebreakers. And for example, you can talk about experiences that change you or that define you or life-changing lessons that you have learned that you wish to share to your club members. So basically, your icebreakers are designed for your club members to know you on a deeper level. Aside from delivering your icebreaker, that's going to be your first speech, you're going to be learning how to develop evaluation and feedback. So you'll be giving your evaluation speech as early as level one. Now for this quarter, we have new developments for level one. They have added two new projects, which are writing a speech with a purpose and introduction to vocal variety and body language. These are very important because this will build your foundation towards two, three, four, and five, because learning how to write a speech is at the core of all your projects. Introduction to vocal variety and body language would help you adjust, especially in our Zoom sessions. You know, Zoom would have a different digital body language. When you start your speeches, it's not like before where you could walk around the stage, where you could do a lot of gestures. Now you are limited to digital body language. Remember that your body language is, is, the, subject, is the subtext of your speech. This will give your audience a more profound meaning to your speech. Because if you look at the percentages, according to the to communication percentages, your speech, the actual verbal speech, only 20% of that is absorbed. A bigger portion comes from, from body language and the tone of your voice and your vocal variety. So level one will be focusing on making you brilliant with the basics. We want to make sure that the basics of being a Toastmasters from grammar to body language, to vocal variety, to speech content form, all this would be covered in your level one. Because again, we want you to become brilliant with your basics. So do not rush level one, take your time. And if you want to redo a project, just feel free to tell your club officers if you want to do so. Now for level two. Level two now will be about introduction to your leadership styles and to mentorship. Usually this is the time when your club officers would assign you or would reinforce giving you a specific mentor or coach so that you would also be determining your leadership style as a Toastmaster. What exactly are the role of your mentors? You know, mentors bring you to places where you need to be in your speech journey, but can't go on your own. There will be hand holding in the process, figuratively, of course, but that's what your mentors would do. If you would need help in delivering a speech, in being composed, or in crafting other speeches, or for example, like for me, in my case, I needed mentors because my voice would always shake. My hands would always tremble when I deliver speeches during my level one. So I would look for a mentor who would help me address that. And also because this is a leadership program in its very core, you have to understand what leadership style do you really want? Like these are the kinds of leadership styles. In my case, my, my kind of leadership style is more of the servant leadership, the altruistic. I want to lead by service. I want to help people uh, lead by being an example first. I focus more on empowerment, on empathy as well. So you also have to ask yourself, as a Toastmaster, what kind of leader do you really want to become? And these are the kind of leadership styles that you, you can choose from. And based on these leadership styles, you can craft speeches based on this because of the tone of voice is different, the strategies are different, and some of the approaches, even your vocal variety is different for different leadership styles and for different purposes. Knowing your leadership style will help you encourage your members in your team, in your organization, in your company to do better. Remember, as a leader, encouragement is your ally. Encouragement is always a low cost, high return leadership tool. So if you know how to do 
if you know how to deliver speeches and determine your, your leadership style, that will help you capitalize on how to encourage your members. Again, for all our club officers, always remember that encouragement in the form of speeches is always a low cost, high, high return tool. So you have to learn how to capitalize on those. Now on level three. Your level three will be your transition phase. This is the time when you now increase your knowledge. From being a beginner in levels one and two, level three, you will be required to do two speech projects and then answer electives. When you increase your knowledge, always remember that you would need more than one coach or one mentor in this process because your electives are now a test of the skills that you have learned in levels one and two. These are examples of the electives introduced in level three. Delivering social speeches, like for example, social speeches are like, for example, you want to give a toast to newlyweds, or you want to deliver eulogies, for instance, or you want to do presentation, or you want to use presentation software, like for example, Canva or Prezi or Google Slides. This will help you do that. One of my favorites in level three electives is connect with storytelling. You know, stories have the power to grab the attention of your audience and hold it. That's the power of stories. You grab their attention and you get hold of their attention longer than usual. If you look at a lot of speakers, whether it's TED Talk or a motivational speaker or an author who just wants to deliver you know, a speech about his book or her book, you would notice that public speakers or very good public speakers usually try to deliver stories to catch their audience attention. If you want to deliver a story or if you if you want to observe, even, for example, um, Toastmasters contest, if you look at a lot of the award winning contests that we, we have for other districts and for our um, for our country here in the Philippines. There's one phrase that speakers use to capture the attention of their audience, and it always baffles me how it changes the, the tone of the room, how it captures their attention like. Do you notice how when speakers say, I have a story to tell you, or let me tell you a story. It's like a magic phrase that just catches everybody's attention. One moment you're texting and when the speaker says, let me tell you a story, all of a sudden your attention is caught. That's the power of story. So if you, if you choose this elective and you know how to use it to your advantage, that's one way to increase the attention span of your audience. Um, using descriptive language is also very powerful, especially in our setting now with all the Zoom meetings going on. You know, descriptive language allows you to immerse your audience in the sensory experience with your, you know, with the way you would deliver your speech. You allow your audience to experience your speech, to hear, taste, see, feel that speech through metaphors, through imagery, because again, it's a different kind of experience when you get immersed in someone's speech. Your, your audience get a sensory experience that makes you memorable. That's the power of descriptive languages in your speeches. You're able to paint pictures with your words. You're able to let them smell everything because painting pictures with your words, it's such a gift. And it's something that we need in the era of Zoom meetings and Zoom speeches. So when you do your elective projects, because you're only required to choose two, but when you do other paths, you can try the other um, elective projects because these are things that will help you connect your audience and influence them also. So that's very important. Like what I said, effective body language here, like what I said earlier, body language is the subtext of your speech. So even if it's online, always remember to still do body language. So that's your level three. And for vocal variety, just, just an add on before I proceed to level four, vocal variety would also help you connect because Monotony is one of the most common and cardinal sins of public speakers, including myself. I have been monotonous for so long that I had to listen to so many speakers. In our club, we have um, distinguished Toastmasters, Virgil, Bang, distinguished Toastmasters, Sonia. These are very powerful speakers, and they help me overcome the monotony in my voice because I get so nervous. Until now, you would notice maybe even I still get to struggle with the shaking of my voice, but you get to learn. You get to learn as you progress through 
the levels. So do not stop at whatever level you are now. Just keep on delivering your speeches. Now on to our level four. Your level four will now be about building more intermediate and advanced levels, building higher level skills. Aside from your two required speeches on level four, your electives would now be more challenging. It's going to be creating a podcast, you know, building a social media presence, managing online meetings. You also need to manage a difficult audience. This is one of my favorites. I, I was able to test, uh, it was not a speech project, but there was an instance in Toastmaster where I had to manage a difficult audience. Uh, I, I, I experienced hostile feedback from someone that I did not know. Then what did that situation teach me? It taught me to react with total detachment. That's the key if you want to manage a difficult audience. Never chastise a difficult audience. Chastise, that's going to be their best friend. So do not chastise your difficult audience. You will have your snipers. Your snipers are the audience that would wait for that second where you'll commit a mistake or that second to embarrass you or interrupt you. So what's the best way to handle them? Detach and don't take it personally, even if you think it's personal. This is one way to test your composure. Because when you manage your difficult audience, aside from your snipers, you have your clowns. Your clowns are people who would make fun of your speech or they would not really make fun of you, but they would try to be funny to get someone's attention. So you have your clowns. And I think the worst part for me would be your snowman. Your snowman would be people who would not react. You would be delivering the best speech of your life and no clap, no facial expression, no appreciation. You know, these are your three most difficult audiences, your snipers, your snowmen, your snowmen and your clowns. And for you to be able to handle them, you have to understand that composure and detachment are your best friends. As a public speaker, you have to learn how to master those. And in my case, when I handled a very difficult audience or a difficult person in a group of an audience, it, I just I just gave that person a chance to deliver her point, and then I just kept on listening. And after listening, I just delivered my my piece, and it's done. We move on quickly as fast as possible. And if you want to do your Q and A as an elective for level four, your question and answer sessions, you have to prepare uh, questions that will engage the audience. Avoid throwing curveball questions as well. And your question and answer elective. This is one elective that will that will test your thought to verbal process, your latency. How fast do you respond to, to questions or answers that you do not expect? You know, that's your QA session. And when you do your QA session, you have to understand that preparation is very, very crucial because you will have answers or questions that perhaps you're not expecting. So aside from testing your your latency, your composure. This is also one way that we can appreciate the value of impromptu speaking. So your level four, this is the chance for you to practice all the things that you've learned as a Toastmaster in, in our table topic session, in your levels one, two, and three. How do you do body language for managing a difficult audience? When you manage online meetings and when you create podcasts, how do you how do you synchronize all the skills from levels one, two, three, and four? So that's going to be where your level four electives are going to come in. Now, next for level five. Your level five now will be about demonstrating expertise. This is the level now when people listen to you, they have higher expectations because you are now on level five. You have finished your fundamentals. You are now more brilliant with your basics. You have now crossed your level three transition. You have practiced level four um, skills. And for level five, when you demonstrate expertise, this is way too different already. Why? Because level five electives are more challenging than the previous levels. Like for example, Leading in your volunteer organization, I, I, I hold a lead role in one of the clubs here uh, locally. I'm the president of a, of a Rotary Club here. And what I realized, it's easier or it's harder. It's harder to lead volunteers than employees 
because employees are get you're getting paid to do it they're getting paid to work so it's easier to manage or lead them but when you lead a volunteer organization it takes a lot of leadership and a lot of communication skills to come across them why because we're all volunteers nobody forced you to be there you cannot demand a lot of their time you cannot demand a lot of their resources you only have to accept what they can give and it takes a lot of communication skills, a lot of empathy, a lot of leadership, a lot of body language, vocal variety to master that. Because how do you make people obey or follow when they're not getting paid to do it? When they don't even get money for it, you know, they don't even get a lot of um, rewards for it. They only get credit and, you know, you, you get to point out the positives as a leader. And when you're a leader, you take the blame first but you give all the credit. You have to get used to doing that. If you're leading a club and you and you reach level five, level five is very humbling. You know, when you do your panel discussions, when you moderate a panel discussion, that's a test of leadership. Why? Because as a panel moderator, you have to switch the balance from yourself to your panel members. You have to switch the gravitas, like you want to stand out, but you want your speakers to stand out more than you do. You want to develop this panel speakers so that their expertise would stand out. Unlike for levels one, two, three, and four, you want the stage. But when you moderate the panel discussion, you get that switch. You switch it from yourself. The highlight now goes to the other people. The spotlight now goes to the other people, not yours. And you still have to draw that balance. As a panel, as a panelist, as a moderator, how do you really moderate an audience? Like, for example, what if a member of the panel refuses to cede the floor to someone else? What if you ask a question and all of a sudden one panel member just refuses to cede the floor and just would keep on talking and talking, forgetting that it's a panel discussion, it's not a one-on-one -on -one interview. What do you do? That's when your skills as a public speaker comes in because you have to be ready with your cut off phrases. Your cut off phrases, these are phrases that, that you can use to cut off uh, a speaker politely, professionally, so that this, uh, this panelist will not be offended. So that takes a lot of um, diplomacy, communication skills, even listening skills, a lot of all that combined together to, to you know, you have to do you have to know how to synchronize all those skills to be able to complete your elective five projects apart from your required speeches because high performance leadership as an elective would cover also a lot of this so if you would see these electives they would complement one another perfectly ethical leadership high performance leading volunteer organizations even postmaster is a volunteer organization when you're a district director when you're a club president you know when you're area director you have to understand that it takes a lot of skills to lead people from different walks of life, people from different levels, because you would have people higher, lower than you. And you have to understand that this is the best time to practice those skills, because level five would already give you the advantage of all the experiences of levels one to four cut now to level five. So the application of all your skills comes in on level five. But do we stop at level five? Level five is the last level for most paths, but level five is not the end. You know, after level five, you have to aspire to really grow in your Toastmasters journey. Because I noticed, this is what I noticed for people in level five. Sometimes they already get bored. I have finished a lot of speeches, I'll just keep on attending meetings, but I will stop delivering already. Why? Because they get bored. Boredom is the greatest villain of your quest for improvement and growth. If you want to grow in Toastmasters, you have to avoid boredom at all costs. How do you avoid that? We have what we call just to share the Goldilocks rule. The Goldilocks rule, you remember Goldilocks? Not too hot, not too cold, just right. The Goldilocks rule tells us that when we have when we have tasks when we want to accomplish certain tasks the we 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 perform a big performance if it's not too hard or not too easy what if you're going to be delivering a speech in front of kids they can't understand right so that won't be motivating for you what if you deliver a speech to a higher level audience way too higher 
then you, you get too intimidated, you could you could panic, you could lose your composure. But the Goldilocks rule as a Toastmaster is very useful for all of us. Why? Because the Goldilocks rule would mean that when you deliver a speech, you have to celebrate your small wins, your small victories. Like for me, the simple victory that I did not stammer. Uh, you know, in, in my first speech contest in the area, I almost cried. All my kids were watching and I just froze on stage with all my kids watching and my husband. Can you imagine? For me, I could be embarrassed uh, in front of anybody but not my family. And I did that on my first contest. But the Goldilocks rule says you need to have enough victories to keep you motivated, but enough mistakes to keep you working hard. Let me say that again. Your Goldilocks rule when you deliver speeches, you need to have enough victories to keep you motivated for your next speech, but you need to have enough mistakes enough screw-ups to keep you working hard on the next path. So level five is not the end. You need to have marginal measures of success so that you're, you're going to be engaged. You're not going to be bored with your journey. And after level five, what's next? Distinguished Toastmaster. Remember, you need to finish two paths to be a Distinguished Toastmaster. And just to end, I want to share with you why I still keep um, joining programs and groups like Toastmasters. This has been my lifelong, my lifelong dictum since um, I was 18. I got this from my dad. Render yourself obsolete every day. Even if you think you're a distinguished Toastmaster already, you have done a lot of leadership roles in the district, in the area. Always, always humble yourself and render yourself obsolete every day. Only in doing this will you grow. Only in doing this will you be humble enough in your Toastmasters journey and just keep on Passing on, you know, passing on the learnings that you have, because when you render yourself obsolete every day, even after level five, you'll know that it's still not enough. There's still more growth waiting on the other side. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Ken Lee. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Katrina. Thank you for introducing to us the exciting projects we might encounter at each level and also for sharing your personal insights, and nuggets of wisdom on the different projects. A while ago, you mentioned that the projects in level four include difficult audience in a Q&A session. Thankfully, we do not have a difficult audience this afternoon, but we will have a Q&A session. But before that, let me just announce that for this session, we will be releasing a feedback form in the chat box, as well as learning resources that you can access. All the materials that were shared this afternoon, you can access it in the link that will be shared in the chat box. A video recording for the session will be uploaded later after the session, so the link will be to follow. So now for our Q&A session, if there are things you'd like to clarify or there are things that you're curious about, we will have our panel of speakers. So our panel will include our three speakers this afternoon. So please help me welcome once again, Toastmaster Marites, Toastmaster Katrina, Toastmaster Luisa. And they will be joined by our district trio, district director Richard, program quality director Jazz, and club growth director Nino. Okay, so to the audience, if you have any questions, please put them in the, please send them in the chat box. But let me first start with a question that was asked earlier. And this is from Toastmaster Victor Esguera. And I think this was raised during the base camp navigation. And the question is for external projects, who will evaluate these projects? And must there be another Toastmaster present in this external event? I can assure you, Ken, that you were not on mute. Okay. <laughs> I know silence means yes, but it's not a yes or no question. <laughs> uh, 
So the question was, for external projects, who will evaluate these projects? And must there be another Toastmaster present in that external event? So this was raised during the talk by Toastmaster Luisa in the Basecamp Navigation. I may ask first Toastmaster Kenley for the one who asked the question, are you referring to the external training request? Because yes, if that's you right. requested for that, that will be approved by the base camp manager, which, who is the vice president for education. But the one who evaluate you during the speech, you have to ask for that evaluation form and send it to your vice president for education for her to approve your external training request. So the evaluator does not necessarily need to be a Toastmaster? In the same oh, time. the evaluator should, uh, I don't know, but usually I experienced that one time I sent an, I made an external training request and the evaluator is a Toastmaster. Depends on the vice president for education, but definitely who is the better person who can evaluate you is a fellow Toastmaster, of course. Right. Yes, I confirm that it should be a toast another Toastmaster. It should be another Toastmaster. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let for... me comment on that, if I yes. may. Sure. Yeah. Yes, ideally, it should be a Toastmasters, but it's not practical, practical all the time, right? For example, you are in your company and there's no Toastmasters there. So what I learned from a guru in Pathways that you can actually have an evaluator who is not a Toastmaster. You can just give him the sheet or you can also take a video of uh, the evaluation that is done to you. So I think it's also acceptable. Okay. Thank I may add on to that. I'm sorry, Toastmaster. No worries. Go ahead. Go ahead. I experience also the same things. What I do is I have a video I sent, yes, just the same as with Distinguished Toastmaster Luisa. I send it to my vice president for education and she had a, like a fellow Toastmaster who evaluate me. At the same time, though, I was not evaluate during the presentation because I was presenting outside of Toastmasters. I presented it in my school. What I did, I recorded it and sent it to the vice president for education. She said that she will evaluate it herself. Right. That's another option. So you can yes. take a recording as well and have it evaluated at, on a later date. Okay. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Ting. Another question here from Toastmaster Rose Pagia is, how do we in input additional roles and achievements such as speech contest awards? I think this is referring to the badges and recognition feature in Basecamp. So how do you input additional roles and achievements such as speech contest awards? Hi. Actually, that feature is not yet available, but you can simply give that particular person a feedback just in, in case he performed well in a speech contest. Just what I have shown you, you just search his name, go to the Basecamp profile, and write your feedback and give him a badge. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster Luisa. We have Toastmaster Che who asked a question, and I think this was raised during the last talk by Toastmaster Katrina. Which level five elective would you recommend? And how come some of those electives, some of the electives are required in other paths? So why is it an elective in one path and a requirement in another path? Okay, for first uh, question, I would recommend moderating a panel discussion as an elective for level five, because like what I've said a while back, it's uh, pan uh, moderating a panel discussion makes it a very different stage for you because at this time you're not you know, you're not the star of the show. It's going to be the other people. And it's really uh, uh, the skills that you need to moderate a panel discussion is very, you know, it, it has to be very intensive also. And the value of humility is practiced as a leader. Now, the question, why is it that the, um, on the others, so these are required and not electives? Because depending on the path you have chosen, like, for example, if you have motive, if you have chosen, for example, pers persuasive influence, certain electives there are required. And, and for the others, it's just an elective because the purpose of your speech is catered towards the path that you have chosen. If, if like, for example, your, your, your purpose is to be... Uh, 
a master in doing presentations. If that's the case, there are certain projects that are just optional for you, just an elective. But on the other on the other paths, these are required. Like for example, if you want to like for me, um, uh, persuasive influence from the term itself, the core of my path is for me to, to be able to speak and encourage influence among my my audience so certain projects there will be required but not on the other paths because they have different objectives at the end of the day there okay thank you toastmaster katrina thank you toastmaster kenley we have a question um, uh, yeah sorry are you going to uh, yes, something oh, i no no it's okay i just okay. saw a question Asigipo, go ahead if you want to address um, here, that question. All paths. How many projects resemble each other? Like an icebreaker runs across all paths. Um, yes, but icebreaker is if you're first uh, first time Toastmaster, icebreaker runs on all paths. I am on my second path. I still have icebreaker on my second path. I'm not sure for the others, so I've tried three or four paths. But for the electives, I've seen that most uh, most of the paths have the same, all the electives only come on level three, and most of the electives are the same, only the difference is that for some, the electives are requirements for some, this is the difference, but most of the paths will have the same set of electives, uh, but some electives are not seen in other paths as well, but when you look at all the paths across pathways, they would all have icebreaker. So uh, I think some of our leaders could answer if does the icebreaker disappear if it's your fifth or or sixth path? I don't know, but I'm not sure on that book. Yeah, to add to what uh, trainer Kat, uh, Kat said, uh, if well, for in line with the question, for levels one to three, there are common uh, projects, not only um, speech project or the level one. So, and um, to your question, uh, TM Kat, not sure about the, uh, if it's a fourth or fifth, but I understand it's for all pa paths that you'll have um, lev the same, uh, especially the icebreaker, uh, because that's the standard across paths. I could see uh, Gobluli nodding her head. Perhaps you have additional input as well. Yes, actually, levels one and two have similar projects because, as you know, the title of this levels are mastering the fundamentals. This is where you, where you will master the um, delivering speeches, basic information, communication style, leadership steps. So almost all levels one and two are the same. Yes, so there are some projects that cut across all all the 11 different paths. Let me add also, if I may, yes. um, there's a project called High Performance Leadership. And somebody asked, which is the hardest one. It's one of the most challenging projects in Pathways. And you can actually find it as a required project in only three paths, effective coaching, innov innovative planning, and persuasive influence. Well noted, Toastmaster Luisa. And if I may just add, because I think a question that normally gets raised is that if I comp if I start doing a lot of different paths, then I'll have to do the same project again and again. But something I learned from distinguished Toastmaster Donny Oliveros was that you can be creative with how you deliver these projects. Like if you deliver an icebreaker, perhaps you'd like to do one that's informative, another one that's maybe humorous, or to focus on a different angle or part of your life as you deliver that icebreaker. So the possibilities are really endless if you think about it. Okay, we have another question here, again from Toastmaster Victor. So I think he's referring to the occasion that some members who have delivered speeches yet never even touched their Pathways account. So is it okay that these clubs depend on the VP Ed to complete these member assignments? So the answer is no, <laughs> because, <laughs> and thank you for raising that. I think that's a timely reminder for all of us. In Toastmasters, we have the value of integrity, right? And if you are um, accessing your pathways, um, there's a pre-assessment and post-assessment that the member 
needs to accomplish. So it's important that the member himself or herself should access his or her base camp uh, and complete those. And there are things that the or tasks that the base camp base camp admin need to do uh, coming. So the president, VP education, and secretary. So they have tasks related to base camp, but the uh, members should also go access their pathways base camp and complete the necessary tasks before, during, and after. Thank you very much, TD Jazz. I see Toastmaster Arli raising his hand. Toastmaster Arli, would you have a question? Yes, um, good afternoon. Uh, my uh, fellow Toastmasters, uh, my apology, I am just new here. My humble beginning, I Hello, still welcome. wanted to learn. <laughs> yes, but uh, I, I just like to know more since I, uh, since I, uh, I attend this one. Um, since I am about to deliver my uh, icebreaker uh, this coming uh, Sunday, and I'm on my, obviously, on my uh, first pathway, who gonna decide uh, that I am already good for my uh, first pathway and then moving on to the uh, second uh, pathway and going on until I reach the uh, fifth pathway? So will be the evaluator or the club will gonna decide that I'm already uh, okay moving on? That's my first question. And uh, second question, uh, I hope I'm correct. Because I joined this club that I wanted to be improved. I, uh, I, I seek to learn. And that, uh, you know, exercising the highest standard of integrity, which I was made to believe that this club is actually uh, having this environment. I, am, I, I, I think I am on the right place. I hope I am. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, if I may clarify, Toastmaster Arlie, your question is who will determine like what level you are as a speaker? Is it your yes. evaluator or some other person in the club? Yes, yes. So, any of our panelists want to take this question? Uh, I will answer that, Toastmaster Kenley. Toastmaster Arlie. Once your evaluator will recommend you to proceed to the next speech, then that means to say you passed your icebreaker speech. Usually you'd know that during the evaluation session. It's in your hands to finish your path. It's up to you, actually. It's your choice to deliver your speeches. I encourage you to please do not stop your momentum once you feel like kind of lazy because you, it's really challenging when you reach to level three until you reach to level five. I may suggest for you to complete your path. It's in your hands, but your evaluator, I'm sure it's the safest place in Toastmasters. Evaluators are only there to help you improve your communication skills, but it depends on the evaluator if you did not meet the purpose of the speech that's the time that the evaluator will recommend you to deliver the speech again and uh, just to add to what uh, Toastmaster Ting said when when you finish a path it's it's also in relation to the new question posted in the chat that can evaluators fail you so uh, just to connect it to the question of Toastmaster Arley uh, I have also asked the same question because I have attended a club uh, uh, overseas where they would really say, your speech does not fit, for example, level three. You have to repeat that. I, I, you did well, but it's not enough for a level three speaker. Some clubs would do that. They would ask you to repeat that, that speech and not allow you to go to the next one. And they would inform your VP ed, for example, to not approve you for the next level. However, here in the Philippines, most of my experience and from feedback also from other uh, officers, they would usually suggest that you redo your speech or repeat or re-deliver. But it's very rare here that they would, you know, literally fail you. And like in other countries, uh, they would be very, because for them, it's really not, it's nothing emotional, zero detachment. So I noticed uh, that's how they would do their, their meetings. And it, they would be very strict. The, the, the evaluator would be blunt and say, I don't think that's a level four speech. 
So I would have to politely ask you to do another speech. But for, for us here, uh, it's the discretion of your, you know, your VP, especially if you delivered it in another club, uh, there has to be an approval for the external request for that to be approved before you can go to the next level of your speech there. Can I add? Sure, go ahead. Tom. Okay, I would like to add and response to those masters, Arlie. Pathways is a flexible and interactive education program that is actually designed to help you build your competencies. If you will only follow the speeches and the projects required and do not do, do not do shortcuts, you will feel it by yourself that you have improved, especially the required projects from level three up to five. We're in most of the required projects you are required to do like a big project, create a guidance committee, um, make a vision, mission about your plans, implement that plan. And after that, you will deliver the second speech and you, uh, you have to have the 360 evaluation from your guidance uh, members, guidance committee members. So if we will just go through all and each of the projects required, you will feel it yourself that you will become a proficient in that fact. By the way, that is the designation that you will have. For example, you're done with innovative uh, planning. When you're done with that path, you are called proficient in innovative planning. Thank you very much for all the responses. And if I may just add, like apart from your evaluator and the VP for education who can help you assess if you've passed the certain project or not, uh, we recommend most clubs to assign a mentor to each new member. And I think that mentor is someone who can give you a feedback and you can gauge the level that you are as a speaker and what you really need to develop as well. Okay, we have a question here from engineer Nelson Salazar. Yes, sir. Thank you. Which is a better practice to complete a path first or do two pathways simultaneously? Can I answer that? Sure, Based on my experience, I was so overwhelmed to finish two paths and I did it one level, both the same at the same time. And you know what? The disadvantages are you don't get too much of the feeling that have I achieved the goal? Do I met the purpose, but I'm in a hurry? I may suggest do it one speech at a time. I know there are existing Toastmasters right now. They have like several paths, like, okay, I will enroll in, uh, enroll myself in three paths. And once I deliver my icebreaker speech, this First delivery will be for my leadership development. My second delivery of my icebreaker speech will be for my presentation mastery. And for my third is engaging humor. It's really overwhelming. Overwhelming. I may suggest do it one speech at a time and one path at a time. This is just based on my experience, but if you're really a full-time Toastmasters, you have nothing to do in life, maybe you're retired and just make use of your time, why not? I guess that's it. Okay, thank you for sharing your thoughts, Toastmaster Ting. There is a question here and I think this is intended for our district trainer, Toastmaster DJ, it's from Lou Jane. So I am in level two. I think I need help in listening. Do we have training on empathic listening? Empathic listening. Actually, we can come up with supplemental training, but there's a path which is fundamental that I can actually recommend, no? Because all across the path is a portion in which we learn evaluation. And then in fact, we're going, we're, we're supposed to do it twice. Now because the, and, and a huge part as we know with evaluation is actually listening skills now. So aside from going through the steps of being a good evaluator, I think one of the best benefits also in terms of learning that skill is listening. Because as we know, communication is not just about speaking, Communication is also about listening. And among the path, and we can repeat that several times, is to take seriously the path on evaluation. 
that alone can help. Okay, thank you very much, Toastmaster DJ. And we have Toastmaster Raju who has a question. Toastmaster Raju, would you like to share your question to us? With us? Uh, across all paths, uh, levels two, three, or even maybe level five, uh, there is a suggested content. Like, for example, the styles of leadership in uh, dynamic leadership for level five. And uh, it offers five or six styles of leadership. Now, my question is to TM Jazz or to anyone is that how much uh, weight, how much attention or consideration should I give to the suggested content? Can I just go totally off the tangent and bring in a new thesis, a new paradigm on any of those properties? I don't want to. Uh, indulge in the thesis of the paradigms offered by Toastmasters. This is quite different from the legacy uh, system where there was no content offered or no content presented or suggested or modeled. Nowadays in pathways, most of the uh, pathways and levels have suggested content. So that's my question. Did I make sense? I mean, you're, you're kind of frowning, DJ yes. Moises. Your <laughs> eyebrows went together. Is that, am I off or am I missing? You're on mute, sir. It's, it's actually an interesting question, but I just did not get it honestly. So I did not practice empathic listening. <laughs> okay, I'll repeat it. Uh, yeah. In most of the pathways and may, across many levels, uh, there is so much, there are so many paradigms suggested. For example, in dynamic leadership, there are five or six styles of leadership suggested, you know, visionary and uh, coaching, etc. What if my choice of leadership styles are different? What if my choice of content is different? So how much okay. consideration should I give to the suggested or the model content presented by each of the parties. Is it clear or do I need to repeat it a third time? Okay. Oh, yes, yeah. See here. So I hope I got that the question correctly now. But I think the question's context has something to do with the suggested uh, leadership styles, for example, and then going through that uh, several times or encountering that in various other sources. Yeah and how we go about that. Yeah. I can connect to that question and, and, and that's a very good one because how I normally do is I practice the Pareto principle. That's also how I, I approach the different path and also the different learnings that are available. And to some of us, to, to us who are familiar with the Pareto principle, it actually says that we pick the 20% critical few that can actually have 80% of the impact. So that's also how I treat uh, information and also learning that's available. So it doesn't necessarily follow that everything that's been given to us are also things that we would exactly do. Because at the end of the day, at least per my experience, we can actually filter through them, whatever is applicable to us and whatever useful to us. And then if there are certain supplemental leadership training that are available for us outside those masters, and I think a cat mentioned that earlier. Those are actually things that we can also integrate in the learning. I think I can use cat talk as an example. As we can see, she's actually going through the Toastmasters material, but there's a lot of insight that she also introduced, which is not necessarily part of the Toastmaster material. So that's also an application of integrating the, what's available for us and then practicing the Pareto principle. And it's our choice at the end of the day, which 20% we would take and practice making sure that it would still generate 80% of the desired impact. I hope I answered the question. But you went all around, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'll buy it, I'll, buy, I'll take 20% of it. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much Toastmaster DJ and for your question Toastmaster Raju. Unfortunately, we're running short of time. I know there are a lot of other questions so I hope we can just end with this one more question and then maybe the other questions, especially the technical questions like the ones raised by 
Toastmaster Diana or Toastmaster Karen, we can address them separately. So this question is, I find that a member may have given credit to, patch, to past speeches delivered before Pathways. What can a base camp manager do to explain to this member the proper way to give credit to past performances? So giving credit to past speeches delivered before Pathways. Toastmaster Kenley, I learned from distinguished Toastmaster Normal. I asked him about a, a situation where I deliver something outside of Toastmaster, and I asked him if how many months should it take that that speech of mine will be credited, and he told me six months. After six months, that speech will not be credited anymore. I don't know if that's the the question that this uh, Toastmaster asked about if. Is it af before pathways? Am I right? If I, I, I get the question clear. Yes, absolutely. That's the question before pathways. So it seems that this member has actually given credit to all his speeches in the past before pathways came. So as the base camp manager, I am in effect because it could become quite emotional or all the speeches that they had in the past are not credited. So what do we do? What can we do? Mm -hmm. We cancel? Okay. There's the core value of integrity. Now, these exactly. past speeches might be two years ago, a year ago, but we only have six months. And remember, I told you, um, Madam Toastmaster, that my icebreaker speech last 2015 was not credited when I went back to 2018. I have to repeat it all over again because this, that does not belong to the edu modern educational program or the new educational program. I may suggest let's practice integrity. The reason why we are here, it's because we need to improve our communication skills and we have to follow the rules. And as Toastmasters, I believe all of us here would want to finish our paths within the projects being asked because there are actually speeches that you need to finish a period of time, especially in level five. I know for sure that distinguished Toastmaster Luisa could add on this. It's only that it's only fair to tell the Toastmaster that the expiry of your speech that you deliver is just within six months. After that, that should not be credited anymore. That's the what I've learned. Yes. Awesome. Let me yes. add to that. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let me just add to that. What is the basis? The basis is actually the speech objectives. As long as you meet the speech objectives, then you can apply it to the pathways. Now, another thing, this is where the work of the VP education is coming in, very important. You have to verify that this particular speech is, was actually delivered and actually met the speech objectives. That's it. Exactly. The I would other... like to say something, even though we're running out of time, uh, <laughs> Director Ken, uh, we are running out of time, that's true. But it is very important for me to mention this because I have access as the secretary, I can actually access the base camp. And I have seen that one of our members has credited all the past performances that we had. So what is the, well, the issue of integrity is there, but at the same time that he has, he has also credited himself probably on the basis also of integrity that he had performed these speeches out. However, they are not within the Pathways program and they are quite old. They were delivered in the past. So I get the point, the explanation that these are all expired speeches. Is it possible because to deal with this, because they have, I have already seen how the line has gone to the, almost the middle. You know, you know in Basecamp, you can see the progress of the speeches and the projects. And I could see that this member has already credited himself. So should I tell him to repeat and to, to cancel, to remove the line that he has put in there? He has actually evaluated his, his speeches all the way to that line. You know what I mean in the base camp? 
you get this line that is uh, dark blue and it goes while you are progressing in your projects and it's there. What do I tell this guy? <laughs> Should I let him repeat or erase everything and in a way that doesn't hurt? Just a question. Just a question because I think that's an interesting real life case now. Were these six speeches also evaluated? I beg your pardon, I couldn't hear you properly, please. Were these six pre-passed speeches evaluated also? Yes, they were evaluated. They were actually delivered and past. I was present during the, yes, but before Pathways. That's why, you know, DJ, it's very hard because, and at the same time that I am going to give comments to TI about how easy it is for some members to just credit themselves by, you know, by going through the evaluation and the, the yes and no and all sorts of things that they can actually do. Members can just do by themselves. And that is not right because, but then of course there is the issue of integrity. We are trusted to do this properly. But in terms of the question of PMDJ, yes, the speeches were properly evaluated, but they were before pathways. And were they not credited also in the legacy program? If they, they were did, credited, I think they were credited in the old program. Then if that's so the you, case, then if that's the case, yes. then they're already old speeches, evaluated speeches, and have been credited yes. in the legacy program. So in, they don't yes, have in the old program yes. <laughs> for this. He was credited in the old program. Yeah. Uh, and oh. to add to what uh, district trainer DJ is saying, we cannot double or triple credit a speech project. Like if I delivered uh, one icebreaker speech, can I use that for the rest of my other paths? No. So it's one is oh. to one. No. <laughs> so you, you can't actually tell your life in five to seven minutes. It, it's so interesting. You know, your life is so interesting. Every time you have an icebreaker, you have something else to say. Yeah. I am already, yeah, I am already a DTM from the old program, but I am repeating the whole thing because it's the proper way to do it. And it, it's very interesting because the curricula are actually very well built. So, <laughs> you know, you go through the process. It, it doesn't matter. I'm a DTM going into my next icebreaker. It doesn't matter. It's, it's wonderful. But what do I do? I go back to this question because it, it is something that is very sensitive to do. Yes. So my, yes, DJ. I think you're, no, and it's good actually that questions like this are also being raised now. So in fact, I, and Jess also mentioned it, it's not also a good practice and I'll just say it out right now for us to pursue several paths and then repeat and rehash our speeches on different paths. That's not also a good practice and I just have to call that out as well. Yes. Especially, yes. Yeah, especially now that we have access through Zoom and we can attend multiple meetings, we can be part of multiple clubs and we can also... We can also deliver multiple speeches and whether we have not done it or we have done it, but I'll just have to say that rehashing speeches in different clubs, in different path, in different time is not a good practice. No, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think that we have to be fresh every time. Correct. So if, yeah, we, we have to refresh and be fresh all the time. And that's part of integrity. Yes. But, you, you, you know, what do I do as a base camp manager? I have to approach this person and discuss this thing with him. I will have to ask Director Ken to, to actually help me out. And if you can access, being our director, maybe you can access the base camps. But if you can, then I'll probably ask our vice president for education and, and work with that person. It, this is a very sensitive thing because all the speeches were evaluated. He delivered them very sincerely and they were really good speeches. And he has credited them to the Pathways program. That's the thing. The pathway should be built so that it's 
stricter. It has to be strict with the crediting of our performances, our, our speeches. I think is anyone can just go in. If you are a member, you go in and then you actually can credit yourself, which is not right. There should be, you know, there should be a stricter rule on crediting one's performance. Don't you think so? Yes, definitely. And thank you for pointing that out. And even in the old program, it's very prone to a lot of malpractices. That's why, uh, again, we kept on repeating the value of integrity. If they have been submitted already, then we can't do anything about it. But we can approach the concerned Toastmasters and remind them of the proper way to do it moving forward. Yes. So now that we yes. know... Uh, about all of this, now we have the opportunity to improve and change uh, and address the malpractices. Yes, yes. And again, because if the issue persists, we have a dis district disciplinary committee <laughs> who can address yes. the <laughs> practices. Can I add yes. something to this? Can I add something? Yes. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I've just been listening to. To Alice and I agree totally. The problem is the VP Ed has a problem. If the VP Ed sees a request for approval, that means a member had gone through the pathways and, and you know recorded um, level completion. The VP Ed will get this request for approval. What does the VP Ed do? He has no choice but to approve it, right? Unless the only thing that I could suggest is. Can you show me the written evaluations? Then I'll approve it. But we're, I don't think we're practicing that at the moment. I, I actually commented a while ago, if I may say something more, please. Yes, I commented, yes, I commented a while ago that the evaluation form and the speech project checklist should be given to the evaluator so that the evaluator can, can hit the objectives during the evaluation. It should not be a, you know, a hit and run kind of, of evaluation. For example, if a speaker is asked to do three points in the speech of five to seven minutes, then the evaluator should know that through the evaluation form and the project checklist. And very seriously, this is, you know, this is a curriculum that's really built for, for Toastmasters that uh, are honest and would like to earn credit properly. But there is something in the program that needs to be corrected because the members <laughs> who are not probably practicing integrity are going to, you know, just credit themselves. And that is not right. I totally yeah. disagree with that. I think another suggestion that can also help control uh, that type of practice is uh, the imme immediate crediting once the speech is also delivered. Because I think to the point also of not just Alice or also Vic, you know, I think it's easier for the vice president for education to manage it if the club also practice immediate credit. Because after each meeting, there's probably just three or four speakers. And a lot yes. of us actually meet every other week. So that means we have plenty of yes. time to immediately uh, submit the speech for Credit. crediting and mm. for them to be approved. Mm. Those type of problems yeah. normally surface if we have a lot of speeches in inventory and they have not been approved real time. But if we manage it diligently and on time, then this type of problems can also be controlled and avoided. Yeah, so do I approach going back to the problem? Do Looks I approach like this guy and... Yeah, it, it, it's like. a very sensitive thing, you know? <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, okay. Thank you. So, thank you for that question, Toastmaster Alice. We've had quite a discussion. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So if I may suggest, if you have any unanswered questions, please raise them to your Vice President of Education your area directors, division directors, or each division is also assigned a program quality uh, director and a pathways champion. So you may get in touch with these people for any questions you may have on pathways. So we will now move on to the 
closing remarks for this session. So to close this afternoon session, let's hear from our club growth director, Postmaster Nino Sepulveda, and our Thanks. program quality director. Oh, sorry, go ahead first, Postmaster Nino. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster Kenley, our Toastmaster of the day. I would like to thank everyone for attending this session this afternoon. It really demonstrates your dedication to learning the Pathways training session. And DJ, Pisha, Kenley, Toastmaster Ting, BTM, Louisa, Katrina, Rumaya, and the rest of the training, thank you so much for your time for sharing your knowledge in, to us we doing the pathways. And thank you for showing us the path to pathways evaluation resource and how to update our profiles for that, so to speak. And some of us may be already familiar with the pathways and how to navigate it, but it's good to receive refresher course on how to navigate it. And I myself is amazed to learn that there are so many things that we can do other than choosing a path, can access transcript and certificates. And I like, by the way, uh, Toastmaster Luisa for sharing that commendation part that we can share feedback to our fellow Toastmaster. And on a lighter note, I'm still puzzled as to why we able to answer the simple icebreaker by Ronji the tennis part. So thank you Toastmaster Ronji for entertaining us this afternoon. And with this session, I hope everyone will enjoy and maximize our Pathways learning experience. Have a nice weekend everyone and see you. Toastmaster Kenny. Thank you, CGD Nino. And we will also be hearing from our Program Quality Director, Toastmaster Jazz Incarnacion. Thank you, Toastmaster Candy. I would like to thank all of you for making time to learn the Pathways program and actively participate in this session. From the questions I heard er earlier, this is not yet over. Don't worry, we have another training session on path Pathways, focusing on Pathways Base Camp Administration. And I have noted the questions that you've raised. So I'll also check uh, with the, the TI contact on some of those. Uh, and let you know and share our updates once available. I would like to recognize the valuable efforts of our training team led by District Trainer DJ Moises for organizing and facilitating this important training. Special thanks to our awesome speakers, Toastmasters Ting, Louis, Kat, as well as to our Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Kendi, the Icebreaker Facilitator, Ronji, and Zoom Master John. The session, this session intends to provide you with an overview on uh, and updates on Pathways. Again, stay tuned for the succeeding training on Pathways. And please watch out as well for more updates from Toastmasters International regarding the new Pathways Level 1 and other exciting updates on Pathways that will be beneficial, especially for our new members. So I would like to challenge all of you to apply what you learned today address the malpractices, and focus on the <laughs> quality of the speech project completions aside from the quantity of goal completion. Thank you once again for your active participation and valuable insights. We hope to see you in the succeeding training sessions. For the District Council members, see you at the District Council meeting at 3.30 p.m. today. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe and healthy. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you very much, Program Quality Director, Distinguished Toastmaster Jazz. And thank you all for attending this afternoon session. I hope you discovered the many things that Pathways has to offer. And in the coming weeks or months, lose yourself in these paths. After all, as someone once said, some beautiful paths can't be discovered without getting lost. And I hope Pathways enables you to, as Toastmaster Katrina said, render yourself obsolete every day. So thank you very much, and I hope you all have a pleasant afternoon. All right, a group let's picture have a good picture. You... <laughs> <laughs> so please right. turn on your videos as we take a group picture. 
All right. Thank you so much, TM Kenley. All right. I have five pages with me, guys. Please get ready with your brightest smiles. Page one, one, two, three, smile. All right. Going to page two, one, two, three, smile. All right. Now going to page three. All right. One, two, three, smile. All right. Now going to page four, one, two, three, smile. And last but not the least, page five, one, two, three, smile. All right, back to you, TM Ken. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, bye-bye. All -bye. right. Thank you very much, thank you. Bye, everyone, thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Stay you safe, so everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Director Ken. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Is this the same link for the director's meeting? No, there's another one. I oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there's another registration as well. See you there. See you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.